Hi crafters! It feels good to be here in front of the camera. Well, my hands in front of the camera for us. I wanted to do this project for a long time now. I actually, well, I'm going to show you a picture here. So what you're looking at in this picture is a rug that I crocheted while I was vacationing. And I really wanted to get it on camera for you, and I tried, but my sound quality was just horrible. So I decided I would remake the rug and show you how I did it after the fact. I'm making roses in two sizes. One starts with 31 chains. The larger size starts with 41 chains. They're very easy to make. And it's a nice compact rose. It's got a thickness to it that makes it really nice to, to walk on. And it works really well for this rug project. So you can see there's not a huge size difference between the two, but just enough so that when you look down at this pile of roses, there's variation. Also, you may notice that although these are the same sizes, these are the smalls, these are the larges, they're actually just twisted. Um, one, one's twisted where the petals come up and one's twisted where they laid back down. And that makes a difference as well. So with the petals coming up, you get a little thick rose here, nice compact kind of um, curling up towards you. And then when you set this one next to it, you can see this one just lays a little flatter. The petals want to lay over and down. And that just gives another little bit of variety in the rug itself. And I think that that just worked out really beautifully. So I am using a basic four ply worsted weight acrylic yarn. Super hardy, inexpensive, and I think I can even throw it in the washing machine. Haven't tested that yet, but I hope that I can <laughs> because I definitely want to be able to wash this rug. But um, I'm also using a size H or number eight, five millimeter crochet hook. This one has a lovely wooden handle. It's very nice to work with. So I'll put a link below for this. You're also for finishing, going to need just any pair of scissors and you're going to need a needle. I have a nice metal, um, really large eye um, blunt and needle. And that was very, very easy to work with. So I'll show you that when we actually stitch these up. This is the small rows. So we're going to start with our yarn. I am a right-handed crocheter, a left-handed writer, but I crochet with my right hand. So um, I put my yarn in my hand by wrapping my pinky once and then bringing the yarn over all my hand. And then I grab with my middle finger and my thumb and I tension with my index finger and that pinky. See, I've got a little bit of a grab on that yarn. Okay, that's how I hold my yarn. I'm going to work, my work area is the area between my hold point and my index finger. So I'm working right here. I always start my chains by taking my crochet hook, putting it on top of the yarn, kind of bringing it underneath. So now I have the yarn coming over, wrapping, and then coming out from the underside. And then I take that and I actually bring that hook over the top, twist it all the way around once. So I've just made a twist here. And then what I do is, first of all, I loosen that up a little bit because you need some working gap room to get through just this very first um, loop. You need that head of your hook to get through that. And then all I do is take my hook over the top of my yarn, come underneath, grab that yarn, that's what the hook's there for, right? Grab that yarn and pull it through. I just made my first stitch. Now after that first one, it gets a little looser and easier to hold. I don't have to come up and hold it like right next to my, my yarn here or my loop. I can just hold it down here and then I just continue on. So that was one. So this is two. Just coming up and grabbing the yarn and bringing it through. Three, come back up. Four, come back up. That's five, but now that look at it, it's starting to get a little wonky and loose, right? So now I just want, I want to change my grab point. So all I do is I just, I kind of tend to automatically do it, but I put my index finger on top of that loop. I let go, ah, and then I just come up and grab it a little closer. And then I just keep going. Twenty-nine, thirty, 
31. So now we're going to single crochet going back the other way. So what you're going to do is you're not going to go into the first loop here. You're going to go past that loop and into the second. Take the head of your hook and go through. You're going to come up and grab the yarn, pull it through that loop, and now you have two loops on your crochet hook. You're going to come wrap that yarn around your hook again and pull it through both. That is a single crochet. We're going to do that again. But I want you to notice something, especially if you're a beginner. When I do this, you open it up and you see there's kind of an opening here. That's the one we just did. So don't go into that bigger opening. Make sure you go to the next stitch. Go in, pick up the loop, grab your yarn, pull through one, and then pull through those two. See where that top loop is. Come in, wrap, pull one through, wrap again, pull through two. Next loop, enter the loop, wrap and pull through once, wrap and pull through two. Go to the next loop, wrap and pull through, wrap, pull through two. You're going to go all the way down the line back to the beginning doing that same exact thing. One more time, take the head of our hook, go into that last loop, grab, pull once, grab and pull twice. Okay, so you did it. You single crocheted and look at it, makes this cute little curly cue. <laughs> Don't worry about it curling up. It's not going to be a factor. Well, it's sort of a helpful factor, I guess I should say. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn the work and go back the other way. So we're going to first make one chain. So just wrap and pull through once and then turn your work. Now, this is our last row. What we're going to do here, first of all, is typically when you turn a row, you then, like we're going to do triple crochets. So you might actually chain two or three to get started. We're not doing that here. We're going to go right into our triple crochet. So we're actually not going to go into our first loop, which is right here. We're going to go into the second loop. So we're just going to ignore this whole column where we did our single crochet. We're going to go right into the second one. So we're going to wrap twice, take the head of our needle into that, and we're going to go through now this time, we're going to go through the two um, stitches here. So you should see, pull this string out of the way, you should see two stitches on your needle there, or on your hook. I knit too, so sorry if I confuse hooks and needles here a lot. Okay, so we wrapped, again, wrap twice, and then we're going to go through underneath that, into that hole, where we go under two strands. Come up, grab our yarn, wrap once, and bring it through. You should now have four loops on your needle. Wrap and pull through two of those loops. Wrap again, pull through two more. Wrap again, and for the third time, pull through two. And that makes a triple crochet, a nice long post. Okay, now we're going to repeat that four more times in the same starting position, the same loop. So wrap twice, go into the same hole, come up, bring the yarn through once. You now have four loops on your hook. Wrap and pull through two. Wrap, pull through two. Wrap, pull through two. That's the second one, three to go. Wrap twice, go in that same hole, pull up a loop, wrap, pull through two, wrap, pull through two, wrap, and pull through two. Wrap twice, this is the fourth one, go into the same hole, pull up a loop, wrap, pull through two, wrap, pull through two, wrap, pull through two. So you can see, now never count that first bit. Just ignore it. One, two, three, four, we need one more. So wrap twice, go into the same hole. Last time, I promise. <laughs> wrap, pull through two, wrap, pull through two, wrap, pull through two. Okay, 
Now we're going to finally go into the next hole, which is right here. This time we're just going to do a single crochet. So don't wrap anything. Take the head of your hook, go in again under two strands, come up, pull the yarn through once. You have two loops on your needle, wrap and pull, pull through those two. That's a single crochet. Same way you made this whole row coming up. Now we're going to repeat that particular petal three more times. And after each petal you do a single crochet. So again, take the head of my hook into the next space under two, loop, two strings there, make sure there's two. Come up and pull up a loop, wrap and go through those two loops. That's a single crochet. Okay, so those are our, our four petals of triple crochet. Now we're going to drop this down into a half triple crochet. Now if you don't know what that is, let me explain. It's very, very simple. It starts out exactly like a triple crochet. So wrap twice. Now go into the next space, come up and wrap, uh, grab your yarn, pull through, so you end up with four loops on the needle. Wrap, go through those first two loops, just like you would in a triple crochet, but on the second part here, you're going to wrap and go through all three. So you basically took it down a half step. So instead of going through two, two, and two, you take those last three and just bring them through together. So let's do that again. Wrap twice, go again into the same space, pull up a loop, you have four loops on your hook, wrap and go through two, now wrap and go through three. And that's the second leg. We're going to have five legs again. All the petals have five legs. So wrap twice, go into the same hole, bring up a loop, wrap and go through two, wrap and go through three. Double wrap again to start the next one. Go into that hole, pull up a loop, wrap and go through two, wrap and go through three. So that's our fourth stitch, so double wrap again, same hole, pull up your loop, wrap, go through two, wrap, and go through three. Okay, that is a triple, half and triple crochet. Now we're going to finish this by going into the next space with a single crochet again. When we get to our two smallest petals, we're not going to do a single crochet anymore, we're just going to do a slip stitch. I'll show you that when we get there. So, we're going to finish this again with a single crochet. That is our last single crochet. We're actually going to drop down to a slip stitch in between the petals now because we're going to a smaller petal. So, <clears throat> we're now going to do a double crochet. So the way you do a double crochet, and again these are the US terms, you're going to wrap your needle once. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're going to wrap your needle once. Go into the next space, Grab the yarn, bring up one loop. You now have three stitches on your, ho your hook. Wrap and go through two, wrap and go through two. That's a double crochet. Wrap once, go back in the same hole. Bring a loop up there, wrap and go through two, wrap and go through two. Wrap once, go in the same hole. This is the third leg of the petal. Okay, wrap once again. Go in the same hole, this is the fourth leg, bring that loop up, wrap and go through two, wrap and go through two. Wrap once, go back in the same hole, wrap and go through two, wrap and go through two. I think that's our fifth one. You can always double check. One, two, three, four, five, it sure is. Now we're not going to do a single crochet anymore. We're just going to take the head of our hook into the next space, again go through those two legs there, we're going to come and grab the yarn and pull it up, but instead of wrapping and pulling through those two, we're actually just going to take the loop that we just pulled up. Sorry, my tension got loose there. We're going to take the loop that we just pulled up and just grab it and pull it through the last chain. That's called a slip stitch. So let me just show you that one more time. See if I can pull this out without pulling everything out. Alrighty. So I just ended my petal, my double crochet petal, with um, my fifth leg, and now I want to put a slip stitch in here. So again, I'm just going to take the head of my hook, go through, grab the yarn, and I slip it through that hole and all the way through the chain that's still on my hook. 
there you go. Slip it all the way through. So you end up with just one loop on your hook. Now we're going to do our second double crochet petal. Remember there's four of those. Okay, one more slip stitch. Now, when you get down to the end, you should have five more spaces. One, two, three, four, five. So yay, I did it right. <laughs> That's great. Now, sometimes I've gotten down to the end and I've had six spaces, even though I've already done my single my uh, slip stitch. And sometimes I get down and I've only had four spaces. Uh, I think one time I got down here and only had three because I just made too many of the double crochets. And let me tell you, don't pull your work out. It's all okay. It's gonna be fine. If you ended up with only four spaces, what'll happen is, so say there's four here, I will um, do my last, my half double crochets. I'll do one here, slip stitch, and one here. And then I have this stitch hanging out at the end. It doesn't matter. When I make the rows, when I sew it together, you'll never see it. So it really won't matter. And it doesn't matter if there's a little variety in the roses because you're going to bunch a whole bunch of them together, sewn together. Nobody's ever going to see in any kind of minor flaw. And it's really just unimportant. So don't worry about it. Don't feel like you have to pull your work out and start over and make every one of these perfect, okay? Just allow yourself a little imperfection on this thing because nobody would ever know when you sew that thing together, nobody's ever gonna see deep down into here and find out there's an extra stitch, okay? So just don't worry about it. So let's get these last stitches on here and finish this rose. Okay, so I ended up, and I can tell I'm in the right place because of the five stitches, so that's just nice. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna wrap our needle again. We're gonna go into the next space with the head of the hook, come up, uh, grab the yarn, pull up a loop. So we have three stitches on here again. Well, that's what we had last time, right? And then we wrapped and we pulled through two, and then we wrapped and pulled through two. And this time we're not going to do that. It's a half double crochet. So we're set up just like a double crochet. We're only going to do half the steps. In other words, we're going to wrap and pull through all three. Boom. Done. Isn't that nice? So wrap your needle around uh, I'm sorry, wrap the, the yarn around your needle, go into the same space for leg two, come and pull a loop up there, you get three loops, wrap and pull through all three. Wrap your needle, go into the hole, bring up a loop, wrap again, and go through all three. Wrap your needle, go into the hole, bring up a loop, wrap your needle again, and go into all three. Some people call that wrapping thing a yarn over. <laughs> so you could call it that too, or you may have heard that. We have one more to go. So you yarn over or wrap, go into that hole, bring up a loop, yarn over, wrap again, and go through all three. And so there's five stitches there. Really see how short they're getting? One, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to slip stitch again. So go into the next space, bring up a loop, Bring that same loop all the way through your last, the, the chain that was on your hook. Okay, one more slip stitch. And now we're going to go into the last leg. Now, when you look at this, let me bring this up here so you can see. It's kind of hard to see where you're going, but that's just because there's no more stitches out here holding this up. You want to go through, so let me turn that a little. You want to go through those two legs again. So, when you do this last one, I find I have to almost kind of force it and turn it a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. Just to make sure I get through those two legs the way I should. Then wrap. Oops, I'm sorry. I take it back. Yarn over first or wrap that needle first. Then go through that. <laughs> Knew something was missing. And then go through that last one. Make sure you go under both of those legs. Okay. Let's get that tension back in there. All right, here we go. Wrap. Pull through one, wrap, and pull through two. Wrap your needle, go into that last, now that hole's nice and big, now it's easy, okay? Go in there, pull up a loop, and wrap, and go through all three. That's the second one, we're gonna do that three more times into that same hole. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is give yourself a nice long, and I mean long tail, somewhere between 18 and 20 inches I think is great because you're going to use it to sew the rows, which doesn't take that much yarn, but it, trust me, you want to have something to work with when you're done. 
I, I'm overdoing it, I will tell you that, so you can use a little less, but I just overdid it anyways because, I don't know, I could, so I did. <laughs> so I just take a nice big length of yarn. Do you see how long that is? Pretty long. It's about, it's definitely over a foot and a half. And then I just clip that. Notice I still had my hook on here. Take that hook and just take that yarn and just pull it through. Done. Okay, so that's it. That's a rose. It doesn't look like a rose yet though, does it? So let's sew that thing together so you can actually see it. So let's grab that big needle I showed you. I like this metal needle. It made it very easy to stitch my roses to the backing that I used, which was a rug that I didn't like. Um, but I'll show you exactly what kind of rug it was because it was something that I could easily sew into and you have to consider that. I have some backing options for you so I'll, get, I'll show a couple of things to you. Okay, so the rose. Now, all you have to do to figure out whether you're making a petal curved up rose or a petal curved down rose is to take it by that midpoint, so on the long tail, which is your center, and then the short tail is your biggest petals, right? So this is your smallest petal, that's the center. So hold on to that thing and just take it and wrap it maybe once or twice. And then look at it, pull it up and look at it. You can see these petals are curving up. If I were to wrap it the opposite way, I can tell right away that those petals want to go out. This way I sew differently than I do for this way, the petals curving in. So for the petals curving in, I just wrap the whole thing up. And as I do, I can actually see my line here wrapping around itself and ever expanding. So it's like a, sp uh, a spiral. I can see it going outward and when you flip it over the petals keep coming out closer to the edge it makes it nice and they're, they're not only are they bigger petals but they're extended out a little more so it makes a really nice shape right all right now first of all i have my big petal right here my last petal this is the tail i just kind of stick that out of my way off to the side but over the top and off to the side okay i've made my spiral and on this one it just sits it'll sit there it's not going anywhere Okay, I can see my yarn is coming out here, so I'm gonna turn it back on itself and go back the other way. I'm gonna pick up a loop and pick up those edges. I'm only grabbing a couple here because it's a small rose, right? There's one, two, and three. And just bring that yarn through. Don't pull too hard, okay? Then I'm gonna come down like, I don't know, a quarter to a half of an inch, somewhere in there. And I'm gonna just pick up and go across and again, I'm not trying to shift anything around, but just go across and pick up those stitches and pull that yarn through, gently. I'm not trying to squeeze it together and tighten it all up and make it, you know, make funny shapes or anything. Now we're gonna go ahead and come around again another about, I don't know, quarter to a half an inch. We're just kind of making a little spider web around this. And you can begin to see why I do want to have a little extra yarn because I'm going to take up a couple inches going across this thing. So just come over a little bit further. And if you weren't paying attention or you're just being a little haphazard and you just couldn't tell if you did a good job, just come around. Like I can tell I still want, like this side here, it's a little bit loose. So I still want a nice good line going through that. So I'm going to come over a little bit more and kind of just pinch that up, get through there. And then I like to end by having my yarn come up right behind this petal, right in here. I'll show you why. So I'm going to just take one more stitch across and bring my needle where I want it to go. Okay, so we've made a lot of cross hatches, but I want my needle to end right here, kind of right at the base of that last petal. So I'm just going to come up one more time, just kind of cross over. Just be gentle and work it through. I'm not pushing on anything real hard or, you know, no, there's no forcing here. Okay, just bring that up. And then now that I'm at the back of that petal, what I want to do is I actually want to come up, just kind of a stitch right here and, and through the side. And I kind of want to grab that a little ways up, about halfway, I suppose, 
into that petal. I'm going to bring my yarn over here. Now this tail, I want it outside over here. And what I want to do, ah, sorry, didn't mean to move it on you. Okay, so you can see that yarn coming about halfway up that petal. All I'm trying to do is take this petal and just slightly tuck it in. So to do that, I've got my yarn coming halfway up. My, this tail's out of the way. And I'm going to just come back down here by this base and pick up a couple stitches and kind of just come out. Um, so I'm just going through a little bit there and sort of towards the center. So pull that through and watch. That's just going to tuck in ever so slightly. Okay. Then I can take my needle off. Don't need it anymore. Then I can take this, these two strands, they're pretty close to each other now, and just make myself a nice little knot. So I do so by going overhand knot in one direction. I reverse that and go in the other direction. And I make a third knot going back the first way. And I've got a nice little knot. Don't cut this string. <laughs> You're going to want this. You've got a short side and a long side. You're going to use these to attach this to your backing piece. Okay, so that's our small rows with the petals sewn coming up. I'm going to make our large rows now and have the petals go out. So to, to sew this where I have the petals um, whoops, this way, where if you look at them, they want to peel out, I actually just start... I know I need to go in this direction, and I just start sewing as I wrap instead. So the first stitch I do is to come across that first petal and just kind of go in about here, and I'll, it'll peel that petal sort of towards itself, just sort of naturally pulls in. Okay, then I'm just going to wrap, and as I wrap, I just stitch. So I'm gonna, the, that's a little hard at the beginning, but you'll see the pattern really easy after we get going. It doesn't take much. Okay, so untwist and wrap that around a little bit more. And I'm going to just come under here and just stitch towards the middle. There we go. I know it's a little hard to tell what I'm doing. I hope this is coming through clearly. But keep untwisting. Lay that flower, you can see it following, around. And it's not like you have to have a stitch for every um, loop in the thing. You just want to keep coming around. So again, there's my edge. You can see I'm picking up that edge, but I'm picking it up right next to the next petal. there we go. Just keep going. You'll end up finishing it about the same way by, you know, tucking in that last petal a little bit and tying it off. Just about there. couple more stitches and we'll tie off. So there's my loose edge coming in. You see I'm getting pretty wide, right? Because you want the flower to, to, you know, stretch out a little bit, right? You don't want them just tall and skinny. You'd have to make that many more to cover the whole surface of the rug. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Okay, here we go. By the way, the sewing them down onto the rug part it goes pretty quick. I mean, I could finish it in probably a night, maybe maybe a couple nights, depending on the size. Okay, so again, I'm here towards the end of that last petal. I'm just going to come up that petal a little bit and just sort of, I don't want to grab it like halfway. Bring that yarn through. Get that tail sort of out of your way for a second. So my yarn's coming out of that petal. I'm going to bring that, I'm just going to tuck it in a little bit, right? So I'm just going to bring it down here towards that center a little bit. Bring the needle in closer, you know, to the center where that we can tie that off nicely. Tucks that in a little. These like to curve in, but you're going to lay it down on a carpet. It's, you know, it'll get flattened out. So don't worry. Okay, take the needle off of there. And do the same knot. So overhand in one direction. Tie it down. Wrap it the backwards, the opposite way. 
tie it down, and then back to the original way. And tie it down. Don't cut anything off. Okay? And there you go. There's one that's uh, kind of coming out and open, and then here's one that's the other one that we just did, sewn to go up. You're going to squish all these together, but we have more than one color, and they're going to show up great. And I can't wait to show you the next part. So let's get going. Okay, so here's a selection of some of the roses I've made. It's probably about mm, maybe almost half of the roses that I have for the rug that I'm making. And what I'm using to sew this to is just an old, well, actually it's brand new, but it's kind of an old fashioned style of rug. It's just a fabric type of rug. It has um, pretty big holes to get through. So my needle goes through it really easily. And um, I just basically go between the rows. So this works really well. Okay, as you can see, I've cut off a little of the excess trim there. I didn't cut all this away because I have no idea if it'll start unraveling on me. I don't want that. So I've got my first rose here. I've got my short end and my long. My long end is the end I'm going to use to stitch this down. And again, you can find any kind of backing you want to use for this. Um, I was going to use like a, the non-skid rubber mat. But honestly, I don't think it would hold up as well as this. So I think I do think something a little sturdier like this will do well. They have that kind of like a woven, um, I don't know what it is, like natural fiber, kind of stiff, something like that. You could go in and, and same thing. You just kind of whip this back and forth through a lot of it and get it nice and secured and then just tie it off. And um, you're tying it on the top side. I'll show you. So I'm going to start with this one. I guess I think I'll just start right in the middle just so you can see it centered and I'm not trying to work here. So again, I want my rows to come off the edge a little bit. Okay, about maybe almost halfway, not quite. So about a petals, like that large petal length. Okay, and that's enough that that edge is gonna be completely covered. I'm not gonna have to worry about it showing up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take my needle here and come down and um, just make a loop here and pick something up. Let's get that out of my way. Let's see. Just start by getting that kind of there. My needle, if you noticed, I left on the top side. I don't know if that really matters, but basically, look, I'm going to come up through my rows. If I come all the way up through the center, I definitely don't want my tying off onto the rug to show, right? Um, but I want to secure sort of these layers, you know, so they're not, if they get kicked or on the, especially on the edge. Um, I don't want them getting too messed up, you know. And so, and, and it's tough, don't worry, don't get super paranoid about this. But basically, I'm just going to bring my needle down just a little bit over, so I'm picking up some of the yarn, so don't come right back through. But come over just a little, and then just come straight down, and then just come up, I'm going to actually, whoops, sorry, I just bumped the camera. So come straight down, and I'm going to actually um, first shoot for kind of picking up the edge. So I'm going to come down here where I'm coming to the edge. So I'm making smaller stitches into the rows and larger stitches kind of underneath everything. Nobody's ever going to see it, and they're not going to wear out, so don't worry. Okay? So I've got that stitch down, and now I'm going to come along that edge. And, you know, maybe I'm only coming under the bottom. Maybe I'm going to come up through two layers. Okay. And again, I'm going to be stitching down where nobody's ever going to see the stitch. So I'm just diving kind of behind that petal, coming over just a little bit. And you can get kind of big and chunky stitches going here. And I'm actually, well, it's easy because I only have the one rose on here, but I'm just going to bend that thing and bring it, went all the way through the back. Tighten it down. And it looks awesome, doesn't it? So just keep doing that. I pretty much go around the entire rows. So I don't know, seven or eight stitches each. Not very many. So the last stitch I'm going to come down here. Um, yeah, I think I'll just end it there. So I brought this needle back down through here. Grabbed another piece. 
And then I'm going to bring my stitch back up just out of the rug, but not through the flower. There it is. I've got these two ties here, and I'm going to do that same knot that we did before. So we go overhand knot one way, tie it down, reverse it, tie it down, and reverse it again. Tie it down, take your little scissor, make sure you don't snip the rose, that you just snip the tie. You can leave a little tail, nobody's ever going to see it because you're going to bump those roses right up next to each other. And that's it. You just sewed that one on, you use the string that it came with, it's nice and secure. There's a couple little yarn things here, you can hardly even see that. And it's not going anywhere. Bring your next rose right up next to it, and I mean right up next to it. Bring it in tight, okay? You're going to actually want these to kind of be bumping up against each other. I'm going to have this one coming off the edge, and it's a smaller rose, so that'll make this rose come up this way, and you don't, you don't want like this neat, tidy row of roses. You want them shifted off, squished up, you know, so the next one down nice and tight into here and start building that. So I'm gonna start doing that and then I'll come back and show you what I've got. So this came out really great. I'm super happy with this, um, with the rug. It, it's so comfortable to walk on. So I'm gonna enjoy this. I hope that you enjoyed this too and I hope you make one for yourself.